Praise the Lord, everybody. This is Bishop Ronnie Whittier with the Emmanuel Church of God, located at 4935 Union Boulevard, here in the city of St. Louis, Missouri, 63115. Again, this is Bishop Ronnie Whittier with the Emmanuel Temple Church of God, located at 4935 Union Boulevard, here in the city of St. Louis, Missouri, 63115. Uh, first of all, I just want to wish all of the mothers everywhere a happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to my mother first, amen, Mother Queen Whittier, amen, all the mothers of Emmanuel Temple, of course, my wife, Evangelist Winetta Whittier, amen, happy Mother's Day to all of, all of you. I love you and love you all amen and i pray that you have a wonderful day and i want to say to everybody out there amen wish your mother a happy mother's day and if god has called your mother home already then show love to somebody else's mother amen because amen it's a blessing to be a mother it's a blessing to have a mother and without mothers we would not be here so we thank god for this wonderful day as we celebrate mother's day amen and we want you to just join us today as we come to you amen singing and glorifying and lifting up the name of jesus and coming to you you with a word from the Lord. Amen. So to get started, we just want to bow our heads for a word of prayer, and then we're going to hear from Emmanuel Temple Praise Team. At this time, let us pray. Dear Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for this day, a day that you've made that we may rejoice and be glad in it. Father, we pray that you will bless every mother out there, dear Father. Lord, bless them, O oh God, from the crown of their heads to the sole of their feet. Lord, let them enjoy this day, O oh God. Let the, Lord, husbands and let the sons and daughters, O oh God, Lord Jesus, be a blessing to their mothers this day, Father. Lord, and we pray that you would bless us as we go forward, that we will sing to your glory, we will dance to your glory, we will preach to your your glory father lord we will play upon the instruments to your glory lord that everybody everywhere will lift up praise and magnify magnifying your holy name for you are worthy to be praised your god lord and we just ask that you would bless us oh god lord in the midst of it all oh god to remember that it's about you father that we will worship you with all our mind all our heart all our soul and all our strength in jesus name we pray thank god amen amen again god bless you amen this is bishop ronnie whittier with emmanuel temple church of god located at 4935 union boulevard here in the city of st louis missouri 63115 Amen. Again, amen. I want you guys to get a watch party going. Amen. Wake your uh, friend up, your loved one up. Call them and let them know, hey, Emmanuel Temple is on right now. And we praising and lifting up the name of Jesus. Tell them to get that watch party going. Tell them, amen, that God is about to do something on this Mother's Day. Amen. So without delay, I bring to you Emmanuel Temple Church of God. Praise team. Let's say praise the Lord as they come. God bless you. Praise the Lord, everybody. Are we ready to worship on this Sunday? Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. But we're going to stand to our feet wherever you are and begin to worship God together. Amen. How I many know your life is in God's hands? No matter what we're going through right now, whatever situation you're dealing with, know that you are in God's hands. So that's the safest place to be in the whole wide world. Amen. So we're going to sing this song together. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together. Come on, come on, come on, Sam. Let's sing. Come on, put your hands together wherever you are.
strength lies. We know where our help comes from. We know who's our healer. We know who's our way maker. And we thank you, Lord. And we dedicate our lives to you. Lord, we just want to make you smile. We want you to be pleased with our lives. Be pleased with our worship. Yes, Lord. So right now, let's create a worship atmosphere in your household, on your job, wherever you're watching this broadcast. Come on, create a worship atmosphere. Begin to tell God you love him. God, we need you. We bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Here's my worship. Take joy in it. Make it your dwelling place. I want to put a smile on your face. I present my heart to you. Present my my life to you. Come on, let that be your prayer. Come on, let that be your worship. Right here, right now. Yes, Lord. Come on, sing that with us. Here's my worship. Here's my worship. Take joy in it. Make it your dwelling place. Your dwelling place. I want to put a smile. Yes, Lord. Present my, my heart to you. I present my life. It all belongs to you. Yeah, it all belongs to you, God. Everything we have, it all is yours. One more time, let's sing it together. Here's my worship. Here's my worship. Take joy in it. Make it your joy. Put a smile on your face. I present my my heart belongs to you. Yeah. My life to you, Lord. So we'll sing the next part. We'll say, Here's my worship. Here's my worship. Come on, sing it. Say, here's my worship. Here's my worship. Smile. Here's my life, Lord. Here's my life, Lord. Lift it up. Let's say, here's my worship. Here's my worship.
Vamos a seguir, vamos a ver. There is one day in your house. There is one day in your house. There is one day in your house. Come on, sing it to him. God, one more time, sing. There is one day. There is one day in your house. This is where we want to be. like you Lord and so we strive daily to be pleasing in your sight this is our prayer so wherever you are right now come on just lift your hands and begin to talk to our Savior God be pleased with our worship be pleased with our life Lord yes yes be pleased so we'll sing this again. We say, oh, 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 let me make you smile. Oh, 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 let me make you Come on and say, oh, oh, oh. 
come on and say, oh, oh. surrender where you are. He hears your heart. He hears your voice. Just tell God, I want to make you smile. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless vision. his holy name. I want to make you smile, Jesus. Lord, I want you to be happy with who I am, oh God, in you, dear God. I want you to look at me, oh God, and to see a reflection of yourself, dear God, of your love, oh God, of your mercy, of your kindness, oh God. Lord, of how good you are to us, oh God, that we try, oh God, to, Lord, be that way towards our neighbors, oh God. Lord, we just want to thank you right now, Father. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy and grace, oh God. Father, you looked beyond our faults and saw our needs. You were that very present help in the time of trouble. You were that friend, oh God, that sticks closer than a brother. You were that water, oh God, in the thirsty and dry land, oh God. You were the food for the hungry, oh God, the clothes for the na naked back, dear God, the shoes for the naked feet, oh God. Lord, we want to thank you right now, Father. Lord, thank you for being good all the time. Thank you for being the joy and the strength of our lives, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Father, we just thank you today in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. We bless God for Emmanuel Temple Praise Team. I want to make you smile. Amen. And we're talking about Jesus, amen, because if your life pleases the Lord, then I'm sure, amen, God is looking at you and he's smiling to see a reflection of himself in your life. Amen. This is Bishop Ronnie Whittier coming to you from Emmanuel Temple Church of God, located at 4935 Union Boulevard, here in the city of St. Louis, Missouri, 63115. Amen. And we want you to wake up your neighbors, wake up your friends, wake up everybody in the house, and tell them, amen, to join in with you as you watch, amen, and listen to what God is doing, oh man, amen, over here at Emmanuel Temple Church of God. Amen. He wants to do something in your family's life. He wants to do something in your life. Amen. The enemy is out to kill, steal, and destroy. Amen. But God has given us life, and God is offering life to those that don't know him in the parting of their sins. Amen. On this Mother's Day, this could be your testimony. This can be your story in your history that God saved you and sanctified you and filled you with his precious spirit on this Mother's Day in 2020. Amen. There's COVID-19 pandemic going on in our society. Amen. But I want you to know that God is still a healer. God is still a deliverer. God is still a way maker. 
Amen. He's still healing folks. He's still working in folks' lives. Amen. And you don't have to be fearful and feel that God has deserted mankind because God is still on the throne. He's still in control of it all. Amen. And we want you to know today, amen, that God loves you just as much as he loves anybody else. Amen. So don't let depression, frustration, heaviness of heart, financial burdens, don't let it cause you to take your eyes off God. Don't let it cause you to not put your trust in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Somebody wrote a song. They said, in times like these, we need a Savior. In times like these, we need a friend. But I'm here to tell you, amen, that if he's your Savior, amen, outside of times like these, amen, then he can be your Savior when we're going through rough times. He can be your friend. Amen. I want you to know that. I want you to receive Jesus today, amen, through this, amen, because it's not about us. I want you to know that. It's not about how much materialism we got. It's not about how many friends we got, amen. If you, your friend is not Jesus, if your number one friend is not Jesus, amen, you need to get you a new friend. Hallelujah. Amen. We bless God for you. We thank God for all the mothers out there, amen. We want you to know, amen, that God loves you, amen. God made mothers there special. Yes, I know we have fathers too, amen, but today is Mother's Day, amen, and we're going to honor the mothers today. We want to honor the mothers, amen, because you know what, amen, it's not an easy job, amen. I'm, I'm a male, amen, and as I watch my wife over the years raise our children, and I watch, of course, before I uh, got married, amen, and coming up, amen, in the household, the Whittier household, watching my mother, amen, mother her children, you know, it's not an easy job. But I thank God, amen, that my mother didn't turn away from us, amen. And, you know, it also taught me as a, a man how to treat my wife, amen, what to, how to view and honor my wife, amen, as a mother, amen. So I'm grateful and thankful to the Lord for all the mothers, amen. And if you've not wished your mother a happy Mother's Day, I want you to take time out today and do so. And if your mother is no longer in the land of the living, Amen. I want you to thank God for the, for the years that your mother was with you. And I want you to honor, amen, somebody else's mother by just wishing them a happy Mother's Day. Amen. Because love begets love. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to start, amen, with a story, amen, that I heard, amen. And I think it's something good just to make us reflect, amen, on how important mothers is. And no matter how successful we may become in life or how grown we may feel we are, Amen. We will always and should always honor our mothers. Amen. There, there's a story of a king, a young king. He was a valiant young man. He was a good warrior. Amen. He was one that everybody admired. And as a king, amen, in his kingdom one day, amen, uh, they discovered that someone had uh, been stealing from the different tribesmen. And uh, so the king uh, warned whoever the thief was, he said, look, you need to stop now because if we catch you then, there's a, a great punishment that will come upon you. And the, the, the stealing continued to happen. Amen. There was folks still complaining about somebody stealing and taking something that belongs to me. So the king said, well, I need to be harsh and I, I need to just speak a little stronger and let them know that, look, if you caught, then you're going to be whipped by our strongest executioner with 10 stripes, 10 stripes. And, you know, over a period of time, the stealing continued to happen. And so the king, the young, just king, he said, I'm going to move it up to 15. Stealing continued to happen. Then he moved it up to 20. And then over a period of time, they discovered who the thief was in the tribe. They discovered that the thief was the king's mother. The king's mother. So when it was found out that the king's mother was the one that was doing all the stealing, amen, some of the folks within the tribe said, now we have an honest and just king. He's always been fair. Um, and so we wonder what he's going to do in this case. It is this, his mother that's, that's doing the stealing. And then the other side of, of, of the thought was, well, how harsh can he be that he would have his mother punished and, be, and whipped with 20 stripes from the strongest executioner. And uh, so they thought that he was going to just kind of give his mother a pass. And they said, well, that wouldn't be fair because if it was someone else's mother, he, he would have probably had her punished. So 
The day came when the punishment was supposed to take place. And so they waited. They brought this little frail lady out. And they uh, watched the king as he came out and he sat on his throne. And they watched him as he watched them, uh, them bring his mother out. And they uh, brought his mother out and they were uh, getting ready to, uh, you know, lock her in so they can begin the procession of the sh uh, whipping. And uh, they looked at the king and there was a silence. And all of a sudden, the king got up and he took his shirt off and he walked down where his mother was. Amen. And he stood over his mother and he stretched his hands out and his arms out over his mother. And he told the executioner, go ahead with the punishment. My point is, amen, no matter how great he was as a king, he remembered his mother and he knew that there was no way that he could sit there and watch his mother be punished, even though it was a punishment that she would have justly deserved. But he decided that I'm going to take this punishment for my mother. I'm not going to watch my mother go through this. No matter how great he was and how valiant he was, amen, he remembered, amen, that's my mother. And you know what? The same thing is what Jesus did at Calvary, amen. He allowed, amen, us to go all the way up to the point where we could have been killed for the wrong that we rightly deserve, but he stood in the gap for us. And I want to say to you out there, amen, God bless us with mothers, amen, to stand in the gap for us, amen, because I'm sure there were many times that many mothers could explain where there were times there was little food in the house and the mother made sure the children were fed first before she ate. And then some cases where the children ate but didn't have enough, the mother probably in more cases took off of her own plate to make sure the children had enough. And you know, the word of God tells us in the book of Exodus chapter 20, verse number 12, to honor our fa father and mother that our days will be long on the earth, which the Lord gives us. Amen. So you never get too grown where you can't honor your mother. Or your father, you never get too grown where you forget about them. You're doing your own thing and, and uh, they got to fend for themselves. Amen. But know what God would have until the day you die. You always honor your mother and you always honor your father. Amen. And you know what? This is the first of the Ten Commandments that's with promise. Of the Ten Commandments, on this one, God said, honor your father and mother. And then the promise is that your days may be long on earth, which the Lord gives you. Amen. So you want to keep that in mind. Now, I just want to talk for a brief while, amen, about a couple of mothers, a grandmother and a mother, amen. And we're going to look at the book of 2 Timothy, and I'm going to start reading at verse number 1. I'm going to read down through verse number 8. And I'm going to read from the New International Version of the Bible. The scriptures read, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, according to the promise of life that is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, my dear son. Grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God whom I serve as my forefathers did with a clear conscience as night and day I constantly remember you in my prayers. Recalling your tears, I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. I have been reminded of your sincere faith which first lived in your grandmother Lois. Now this is a, a letter from the Apostle Paul to Timothy, the young pastor. He says, I have been reminded of your sincere faith, which was first lived in your grandmother, Lois, and in your mother, Eunice. And I am persuaded, now lives in you also. So what was in Paul's or Timothy's grandmother and in Timothy's mother, they pass it down to him. And Paul recognized this. In verse 6, he says, For this reason, I remind you to fan and to flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of timid, timidity, but a spirit of power, of love, and of self-discipline. And verse 8 reads, So do not be ashamed to testify, testify about our Lord or ashamed of me, his prisoner. But join with me in suffering for the gospel by the power of God, by the power of God. So you can live a godly life, amen, based on what your ancestors passed down to you. In this case, you got Timothy, a young pastor, 
who was pastoring during a tough time because the church was under great persecution. And Paul wrote a few letters to Timothy, amen. He wrote two letters to Timothy and a letter to Titus and to Philemon and, and encouraging these pastors to, to keep moving forward and to keep preaching the gospel. And uh, you want to know something? Paul was in prison writing from Rome, writing a letter of encouragement. And all of those folks that was with him, many of them had, had turned away or, or were fearful of being thrown in prison too for preaching the gospel. But Paul took out time to encourage this young pastor to keep preaching the gospel. And also he reminded him of how his grandmother, Lois, and his mother, Eunice, amen, instilled in Timothy the truth of God's word. Amen. Very important. Now, the thought we want to have today for a short while is mothers blessed to be a blessing. Mothers blessed to be a blessing. And if we define mother, mother is defined as a female parent, a woman in authority, maternal tenderness or affection. And then if we were to look at the word blessed, blessed means of or enjoying happiness, bringing pleasure, contentment, or good fortune. So mothers are blessed to be a blessing. That was the case with Timothy's life. Amen. His grandmother and his mother instilled in him the word of God. Amen. And Paul was the one that converted them, worked with them until they received the Lord Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Amen. They were devout Jewish women. Amen. But they knew the truth when they heard the truth. They knew the truth when they heard it. This letter, again, is a pastoral epistle. Timothy received his name, which means one who honors God, one who honors God. And, you know, the problem that we run into in our society right now is a lot of times Children are brought up in the church, and then they get to a certain age, and they believe when they get to a certain age that they no longer need God, that God is no longer essential in their life. Uh, they somehow believe that there was something dad or mom believed and, and practiced, and, and uh, that, that they're not going to enforce it upon their children. They're not going to require their children to come to know God. Amen. But Deuteronomy, the sixth chapter tells us, amen, to uh, uh, remember God's laws, to, to teach them to our children and, and to our children's children. Amen. Because, look, if you want your seed to be blessed, amen, you need to instill in them the word of God. Timothy's grandmother and Timothy's mother understood this. They knew that one day they would be off the scene, but they wanted Timothy to always remember God's word. And I want to say to the mothers here today, amen, amen, remember, I'm talking to those of you in social media land, I want you to know, amen, that God smiles on you if you are teaching your children God's word. They may be giving you a hard time, those young ones, amen, and even some of the older, older ones may have turned away and said that they'll never set foot in a church again, amen, but I want to let you know, amen, you did your job, mother, amen, if you gave them the word of God. If you instilled in them the necessity to have a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So you are a mother. You are blessed to be a blessing. Amen. And you know, sometimes we don't realize what we have until it's no longer there. Amen. Sometimes, amen, we don't appreciate what our parents instill in us. Amen. But when you become a parent yourself, and I'm talking to that individual that may feel like, well, they don't want to hear it. I want to say to you, amen, if you have children... There is a thing called the law of reciprocity. And the law of reciprocity says that you reap what you sow. Amen. In other words, if you were giving your parents a hard time, amen, you've given your mother a hard time, amen, then more than likely your children are going to give you a hard time. But if I were you, I would wise up. I would start teaching my children the word of God upon doing a lot of repenting too and asking God to have mercy upon me, amen, as I begin to teach my children the truth, amen, because I'm going to tell you, amen, it's very, very important to understand, amen, that, amen, you reap what you sow and that thing is coming at some point, just like that hand on that clock, amen. It may be at a certain point now, but later on, as time keeps watching on, amen, it comes around. And that's the same way that law of reciprocity works. Amen. You may say, well, everything's going fine now. I'm proud of my children. Everything's fine. Amen. But you know what? Amen. All it takes is one of your children, amen, to give you a hard time. And you love them all. But the thing about it is, amen, you, you reap what you sow. Amen. So on this Mother's Day, on this day when you have an opportunity to tell your mother if she's still in the land of the living, I love you. 
or even to, first of all, ask her forgiveness if you've been giving her a hard time. And look, you may say, I feel justified in having given my mother a hard time. Look, let God be the one, amen, that repay. God said, vengeance is mine, I will repay. Now, he's not going to send out conflicting messages. If he said in Exodus 20 and 12 to honor your mother, amen, he also uh, want you to understand that he is the one, amen, that inflicts the vengeance, if there is vengeance to be inflicted. Amen, not us. Our thing is to make sure we do what he told us to do. Our thing is to make sure that our lives please God. And Timothy understood this. Amen. He was, he was fearful. Amen. Because keep in mind, Paul was in prison. And Paul was at the end of his ministry around A.D. 67. Amen. In the year of our Lord. That's that A.D. mean Anno Domini. In the year of our Lord, 67. Amen. Paul was in a Roman prison. Amen. And he knew that the time of his departure was at hand. So he wrote this letter to Timothy, encouraging this second letter to Timothy, encouraging him to keep preaching the gospel and to remember what his grandmother had taught him, to remember what his mother taught him. Amen. And that's what I want to say to you. Remember what you were taught. Remember what was taught in Sunday school. Amen. As you were coming up. Amen. Remember how you uh, was brought in. You didn't want to come to church. Amen. But right now as an adult, you're glad that you did learn the word of God. You did learn how to pray. You did learn how to have a reverence and respect for God. Amen. And if you look at our society today, a lot of parents are not raising their children to come to know God. And you know what that causes? That causes crime to go up. Amen. That causes homes, more homes to be broken up and destroyed. Amen. That causes people to reproduce what they are. Amen. Because if it's not instilled in your children to know God, then they won't know to teach their children God. If they didn't have a respect for God, they're not going to teach their children to have a respect for God. And so I believe I believe that God is shaking our land right now, even with this COVID-19, amen, to remind us, amen, that we need to get back to praying. We need to get back to reverencing and respecting the things that God set in high priority. We need to understand that. And I'm so glad and happy that we are celebrating Mother's Day. I'm glad and happy, amen, that God pushes the pause button in, in, in man's life and for us to stop and think about what it's really all about. Amen. That is not about how much we accumulate in life because all those things will perish. All those things we can't take to where we're going. So we have to live our best life, amen, to the glory of God right now. Not, not, not waiting, amen, saying, okay, God, when I get too old to do wrong, then I'll, I'll, I'll do right. Amen. No, you live your life to the glory of God right now. Amen. Now, there is a better life to come should we make it to heaven. Amen. But you can do your best right now. Amen. And all you do, do give God your best. Give him your whole heart. Worship and praise him with all your mind, all your heart, all your soul, all your strength. Honor him. Amen. Honor him with every fiber of your being. Because the thing about it is God is not going to punish you for how people treat you. Amen. Your judgment will come as a result of how you treat people. And if you don't have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, amen, you don't really know what love is all about because Jesus is love. And he teaches us how to love. Amen. He teaches us how to love our mothers. Let me tell you something about Jesus. Amen. And I said this, amen, the other night, amen, in our Bible class. And people would sometimes call me a mama's boy, amen, because I make sure I call my mother all the time, amen, to see how she's doing, to call her, see how she's doing, amen, uh, to see if she needs anything, amen. And, uh, you know, mothers are real uh, thoughtful, and they know that you have your own married life, and they'll say, no, I don't need anything, that's all right, this or that. If you should get out, then, if, just if you should get out, do this, that, or the other, amen, and that's to me, I always interpret that as, well, she want this, and I'm going to make myself get out and, and do what she said if I can get out and do it. I'm going to make myself do it, amen, because I'm going to honor my mother. Now, I said that to say that Jesus dying on Calvary's cross for the sins of the world stopped dying long enough to look, amen, to his mother, amen, and look to John, the beloved disciple, and say, behold thy mother, and say to the mother, behold thy son, amen. Jesus was concerned about his mother even while he was dying for the sins of the world on the cross. And I don't believe there's anybody in this world that got an excuse to not honor their father or mother, amen. You need to honor your mother, amen, because what you're doing does not equal up to what Jesus did for ma mankind, because if Jesus hadn't died for mankind, none of us would be here to be talking about how busy we are. 
And I always say it like this. If you're busy than, busier than Jesus, you're too busy. Jesus took the time to pray. Jesus took the time to worship. Jesus took the time to go to church. Jesus took the time to acknowledge his mother. And if you think about it, the very first miracle that Jesus did, guess who asked him to do it? His mother. That's right, his mother. She asked him to turn that water to wine. She said, make them some wine. They were at a wedding, and it was part of the Jewish custom for them to, to have wine at their weddings. Amen. And they ran out of wine. Amen. And it was customary for them to serve the best wine uh, first because everybody wasn't drunk yet for the folks that get drunk. They wasn't drunk yet, so they knew the, if the wine was good or not. So when Jesus made this wine, amen, and folks began to drink it, they said, oh, you say the best wine for the last. Amen. So everything that God does is always better. Amen. Everything that God does is always with quality. And God blessed you to be in a family. Amen. And you may not be happy with the family, family that you're in, but God placed you in that family and he gave you the mother that you have. Amen. And the mother that you have is the one that you need to honor because the closest thing that we have to God on this earth is our family. Amen. Is our family. And we need to honor them. We need to remember that. Amen. I don't care how good your friends are to you. And I know the scripture said there is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. Amen. And that's if you got a brother that's not sticking close to you. Amen. But if your family is alive and, and doing well, then you need to be a, part, a very part and active part of what's going on in their life. Amen. Take the time to pick up the phone. Just say, I love you. I miss you. And I'm praying for you. Amen. Just a few moments out of your day. Amen. I just want, I want to encourage you today, amen. I want this day to be special. I want people to get together with their families, amen, and to help honor your mother. This is their day. This is their day. Don't steal it from them. Don't get jealous, husbands. Don't get jealous, amen. This is Mother's Day. And remember, Father's Day coming up in June, so, amen, if you treat them right now, amen, there might be a chance that you can redeem yourself by Father's Day. Come on now, amen. We want, we want everybody to understand that everybody has a part. Amen. Paul taught this to Timothy. He knew, he said, look, you're a pastor, amen, but remember, amen, you were taught how to live holy. You were taught how to live right. You were taught, amen, these things. Mention of their names of Paul's, uh, uh, Timothy's uh, grand grandmother and mother, mention of their names suggests that Paul knew them personally. He knew them personally. Perhaps because he, with Barnabas, led them to faith in Christ during his first missionary journey, and you'll find that in Acts chapter 13. The women were true Old Testament Jewish believers who understood the scriptures well enough to prepare themselves and Timothy. So they didn't just think about themselves. They thought about Timothy. They thought about their offspring. And parents, that's what I want us to understand out there. Don't just be saved for yourself. Want your children to be saved too. Teach them the word of God. Pray with them. Spend quality time sharing the word of God with them. That's very, very important. Amen. I am a product of that kind of upbringing. When my parents started uh, us to go into church, taking us to church and all of those things, amen, I was a really young boy. Amen. And, and, and I always say it like this. My parents had a drug problem. Amen. And what I mean by that is they drug us to Sunday school. They drug us to morning worship. They drug us to evening worship. They drug us to re uh, revivals. They drug us to Bible classes on Wednesday night. They drug us to choir rehearsals. They drug us to Friday night services. They, they drug us to Saturday morning prayer services. Amen. And so it's instilled in, in me, amen, to want to serve God. When I was a little boy, amen, I wanted to go out and play ball and this, that, and the other and do what little boys do, and, that, and that's fine. Amen. But I had to learn how to balance that and say, nope, this is my church time. Hey, nope, I can't play ball in my church shoes. No, I can't play in my church clothes. Amen. Because, amen, they taught me at an early age, amen, to reverence and respect what church is all about, what God is all about. Amen. To respect, amen, the fact, amen, that God wants to have a personal relationship with you. He wants a personal relationship with you. Amen. He doesn't want you to just have heard about him. He wants you to know him. Amen. He wants to know your name, and he wants you to know his name. Amen. That's very, very important to your upbringing. That's very, very important to you raising up your children. Amen. Again, if you have a mother, amen, that is a praying mother, you got a jewel. You got a virtuous woman. If you got a mother, amen, that uh, uh, will quote the word of God to you, amen, you being bad, and she said, now God see you, amen, or she tell you, now I'm going to tell the Lord on you, amen. Oh, come on, mama, amen. 
Look, it, it just blesses me a lot of times, too, when I'm, I, I like to watch football and I, I see, you know, the football players, amen, when they get a close-up shot of the football players, uh, for those who mothers still in the land of living there, wave, hi, mom, and they're acknowledged their mom. Even the, these big, burly, muscular football players out there, Amen. That make you and I look like, amen, midgets in, 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 in comparison, to, comparison to them. Amen. They take the time to say, hello, mom. I love you, mom. Amen. You can take time to say, mama, I love you. Mama, I'm on the other side of the world, but I took the time out to call you and say I love you. Stevie, song, Stevie Wonder wrote a song, amen, I just called to say I love you. Amen. So you can take the time and say, Mama, I just called to say I love you. Amen. I, I, I called to tell you that I, I love you and you mean so much to me and I thank you for my upbringing. I thank you for teaching me the word of God. And I'm sure Timothy was able to say this to his grandmother and to his mother for how they raised him up. Amen. Two things our parents give us. And my friend, Pastor John Husbands and, and his lovely wife, Sister Monica, husbands, who, who has gone on to be with the Lord, amen. Uh, I was sitting in their home once, and, and they, they, uh, Sister Husbands uh, made this statement, and it has stuck with me ever since. She, she said, there are two things that parents are supposed to give their children. And she said, that's roots and wings. Roots where they grow up, amen, good strong roots, amen, where they grow up in that good upbringing, and then give them wings to fly to the height that God would have them go into wherever he's leading them. Those two things. So if you have a parent, a mother, father, that exemplifies that kind of love to you, amen, you are blessed. Amen, don't, don't take it for granted because everybody's not waking up on a Sunday morning to hearing the gospel being preached or hearing godly music. Some folks, amen, couldn't sleep because of all the fighting that was going on in the house. Some folks wondering where mama or daddy is. Amen. And I'm praying for them. Amen. This is what it's about. It's about us reaching out to help people. Amen. But at the same time, for those of us that sometimes take our loved ones for granted, amen, thank the Lord if your mother is in the land of the living. Thank God for them. Thank God for your family members. Thank God, amen, for your wife, or husbands, amen. Thank God for your mother, or children. Amen. It's very, very important. Very important. And it just makes it, it worth a while for them. And a lot of times you may ask them what you want for Mother's Day or what you want for Christmas or what you want for your birthday. And a lot of times they'll say, oh, nothing. Ain't nothing. I just want my family to be around me. Amen. That's special, you all. That's special. Amen. So I think somebody had in a song like this, uh, loving you is like food to my soul. Amen. They call it soul food. Amen. And, and that's, that's how important and how precious our mothers are to us. Amen. Timothy understood this. Amen. Timothy understood this. And we got to understand, amen, that God, amen, is still doing what he's doing. He still works through mothers. He still want to show love. He want us to show love to them. Amen. He still want us to be, amen, an example to our children. Amen. Now, I want to take this time to pray a special prayer for all the mothers. I want to pray for mothers out there. And, and you know what? The Lord put on my heart. I want to also pray for those of you that are not mothers, amen, you, you may desire to be a mother. There was a woman in the scriptures by the name of Hannah. She desired to be a mother, and she prayed, and she sought God and, and asked God to open her womb up that she can beget children. And the Bible says that God was the one that had closed her womb, amen. And she became very uh, saddened because she could not bear children, amen. But she continued to pray and seek God, and God blessed her womb, and she Blessed, and she was blessed with a child, a son. She, and you know what? She said she's going to give him back to the Lord if the Lord blessed her with a son, a child. And God did bless her with a son, Samuel. Amen. A great prophet, great man of God. Amen. Powerful man of God. Amen. And I'm saying to you, amen, it's not too late. Amen. God can do anything but fail. And I don't know who I'm talking to, even Sarah. Amen. Sarah was up in age, and when God told her she was going to have a, 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 a son, amen, she laughed. Her and her husband, they laughed, amen. And God asked that question in Genesis, uh, the angel asked the question in Genesis 18, 14, is there anything too hard for the Lord? Amen. I want to let you know, I don't care what's going on in your body, amen, if it's God's will, that's what you got to pray and ask God for. Lord, if it's your will, let me be a mother and let me be a good mother. 
But if it's not your will, oh God, bless me where I'm such a blessing to everybody else that they wish I was their mother. Amen. So I want to let you know, I, I honor all females. Amen. I honor you. Amen. Because God made you. And I'm telling you, that James Brown had a song out in the world. He said, you're living in a man's world. Amen. But he had enough sense to add on to the other part of that. But it doesn't mean a thing without a woman or a girl. Amen. Amen. So we need, amen, our mothers. We need our sisters and we need to honor them. We need to respect them, men. Amen. We need to keep that in mind. They're a blessing from the Lord. Praise God. Because many things I know I wouldn't be able to do if it wasn't for my wife being there. If my mother hadn't taught me how to be a, a, a good son uh, to, my wife, to my wife or a good husband to my wife and teaching me as her son to be a good husband to my wife and watching my father be a good husband to my mother. You know, I would have missed a lot. And so I'm grateful and thankful to the Lord for that. Amen. To, to know that they're to be cherished. And you know what? We only have them for a period of time. So while we have them, let's, let's, let's just spoil them. Amen. There's nothing wrong with spoiling them. Amen. And one last thing I want to say to you before we pray. Amen. As we watched our parents go through some of the troublesome times that they went through and, and um, they went to the Lord when troubles came in their life. Let us, let's learn uh, people how to go to the Lord when we have troubles and, and not take our burdens to our elderly mothers, elderly parents. Amen. They, they, they're living in their golden years. And as far as they're concerned, they need to see that everything is going good in our life. You may be going through hell and high water. Amen. But talk to God about it. You know, because... Mother can comfort you with some words, amen, for the moment, but God can deliver you from what you're going through. Amen. Praise God. Amen. And I'm praying that somebody out there, amen, that don't know the Lord Jesus Christ and the parting of your sins, that you will repent of your sins and that you will invite Jesus in as your personal Savior. That you would just open up your heart to God and say, God, come in, save me, fill me with your precious Holy Spirit. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray right now. We pray for that individual right now that don't know you in the parting of their sins. Father, that as they receive you today, as they repent, as they say, Lord, I, I ask you to forgive me of my sins. I ask you to deliver me from a sinful mindset. And Father, fill me with your precious spirit that I may live my life to your glory all the days of my life. And Father, I also pray for that individual that may have turned away from the church, may have turned away from you. Lord, the backslider, that you will give them a mind to come back to the fold, oh God, and to live their lives to, the, to your glory, oh God. Those individuals that have turned away from you, Father. Lord, we trust and believe you right now. And bless all the mothers out there to have a wonderful Mother's Day today, dear God. Bless them, oh God, to enjoy this day. Lord, let them be saturated with the love and the power and the happiness, oh God, of family and love and kind words, oh God. These things we ask in your name for your glory and for your honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. We want to thank you, amen, for joining Emmanuel Temple Church of God. Amen. At 4935 Union Boulevard here in the city of St. Louis, Missouri, 63115. Amen. We thank you for joining us today. Amen. We pray and hope that you had a watch party going, that you woke the house up and told them, get in here. Amen. My, my desire for you for my Mother's Day gift is for you to be at church with me by way of social media. Amen. And I, I pray that you got something out of this today. We wanted to focus on the mothers, and I thank God that's what we were able to do through the Word of God. For those of you just joining in, we're getting ready to leave, but we came from 2 Timothy chapter number 1, verses 1 through 8. Amen. And the lesson today was mothers blessed to be a blessing. Amen. Also, I just want to encourage you, amen, to join us on Wednesdays at noonday, at our noonday prayer from 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. Amen. Thursday's intercessory prayer from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. And on Saturday, our hour power from 11 a.m. to 12 noon. Amen. We have a prayer line that you can call in on. And you just dial 1-720-650-3030. And then you just punch in the code 5023-968 hashtag. Again, that's dial 1-720-650-3030. And the code is 5023968 hashtag. Amen. Get in on that powerful prayer. Amen. Those folks, amen, on that prayer line are praying some powerful prayers. 
Amen. And I thank God for the prayer warriors. Also, amen, if you would like to give, amen, uh, by way of donation to Emmanuel Temple Church of God, for those of you who want to uh, give your tithes and offerings, amen, and donating to the church, amen, because the bills are still coming in, you all. You may be saying, hey, we're not having church. What do you mean bills are coming in? Amen. We had to invest in, 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 in uh materials or equipment, should I say, amen, to be able to stream this message to you today, amen, and we want it to come to you in full HD, amen, we didn't want you to, uh, losing your eyesight trying to see who we are or strain your hearing to try to see or hear what we're saying, amen, so we had to invest in equipment so we can come to you in your homes and, and wherever you may be, amen, so we want you to remember to give your tithes and offerings, very important, amen, now you can give by way of Givelify, that's an app you can download on your phone, amen, and you'll know you're at the right Emmanuel Temple Church of God. You will see a picture of myself. You will see a picture of Emmanuel Temple Church at 4935 Union Boulevard, amen, and that's the Emmanuel Temple I'm referring to. Amen. You can also go to our website, EmmanuelTempleChurchOfGod.org, and you can give by way of PayPal, amen. You can go, amen, and also give by way of Cash App. And that's just the dollar sign, Emmanuel Temple STL. Again, that's the dollar sign, Emmanuel Temple STL. That's Cash App. And then you can also, for those of you that would like to mail in your donations, you can mail in your donations to Emmanuel Temple Church of God, Post Office Box 5057, St. Louis, Missouri, 63115. Again, that's Emmanuel Temple Church of God, Post Office Box 5057, St. Louis, Missouri, 63115. Amen. We appreciate your support, amen. We thank God for those of you that have been faithful and has not forgotten about the house of God, amen. Also, I just want to remind you too, amen, we began today at uh, 10 a.m. today. We started our, our Sunday school by way of Zoom, amen. And we're going to be looking into, uh, they have another app called GoToMeeting, amen, which it might be a little easier, amen, but we're going to be coming to you uh, with those uh, apps for you to uh, be able to join us in Sunday school. Elder Victor Whittier was the uh, teacher and facilitator today, and he did a wonderful job in bringing forth the word of God. And we had a number of folks that joined us in Sunday school. So we're going to be doing that again next Sunday at 10 a.m., and we want you to join in with us. Also, First Lady Whittier, Winetta Whittier and I, amen, on Thursdays at 6, uh, Thursdays at 7 p.m., Thursdays at 7 p.m., amen, we're having table talk. Amen. And we just sit down and we just talk about things that may be going on in folks' minds. You know, sometimes something's crossing your mind and you wonder if anybody else is thinking that way. Amen. And we, we just call it a table talk right now. Amen. And we just sit down and talk about the things that's going on in folks' lives. Amen. And we want you to be a, a part of what's going on. Amen. In Emmanuel Temple. Amen. And uh, so we want to reach you. Uh, by way, amen, of social media. Again, we thank God for you. We want to say, again, happy Mother's Day to all of the mothers out there. And I want to remind everybody to honor, honor your mother on this Mother's Day. Amen. Honor your mother on this Mother's Day. Again, God bless you. And this is a ministry. Amen. And our saying is relentlessly unleashing into the world the power of God's word one verse at a time. God bless you. Amen. Have a wonderful, wonderful Mother's Day. God bless you out there in Jesus' name. Hallelujah.